I figured since I have enough knowledge to be dangerous, I would do a short video on brake line bubble flare. It's something that I learned when I was replacing my brake lines in the Fiat Spider 2000. I have a 1979, and I thought I'd pass along that knowledge because although I found some great write-ups, I never saw a, a really good here's how you do it video. So I got, uh, got this kit off of Amazon. It's a bubble or ISO flaring kit. Uh, it's really basic. Um, the reviews were decent. I also got this uh, copper nickel um, 3 16 OD brake line. I read a lot of really good reviews about it, and it's flexible, so it's, it's easy to bend. I also bought a bending tool off of Amazon. This works really, really well. You don't need it, but I wanted to have neat bends. So I'm, I'm just gonna cut this pipe here. Okay, so I've cut the pipe and I've just got a little stub here. So I'm gonna show you what prep work I have to do because as you can see, this is really burred up where it was cut. So let me show you what I do about that. A diamond studded cone bit. And what I do is I Dremel out inside. See how that opened it up? Now the other thing you want to do is put a chamfer on this all around the outside edges. So it, it, it has a nice, I want to say 40 degree, 40, 45 degree, but almost rounded off. And I do the same thing on the inside. So I switched over to this uh, sanding bit and it's a conical sanding bit. So what I do is I attack this around the edges on the outside. So I usually pin pinch it in my fingers and use my fingers to hold the, the Dremel. And I rotate the pipe like this with my fingers. I'm applying light pressure so I don't take off too much material. I go back inside to get the burrs out. I try not to go across the top like that because I don't want to take a flat cut and distort it. I want it all on the same plane. This part of the process is a lot like artwork. It took a little trial and took a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly what kind of work I wanted to do to the end of this, but this tended to yield the best results. So I apologize if this is boring, but I'd like to show exactly what gets done. So I open up the jig and I clamp it down into my vise. Really good here. So then I take I take the pipe and I found that you need to dip it in some brake fluid. I'm using power steering fluid because I don't have any brake fluid here right now, but that also works. Okay, I take that dipped line and I put it out in the 4.75 millimeter spot where it goes. This ear 
stays open. It gets closed last. And on this particular model you, of um, flaring, this particular flaring kit, you have this little depth gauge here. And you use that to seat the pipe down. And I've found that I get good flares if, if this just barely clears it without touching the pipe. You also want to make sure that both of these surfaces are on the same plane. Otherwise, it's going to result in some funky looking flares that are off level. So you close the outside ear first, then you close the inside ear, and that really gets it pushed down nice. I've already installed the tip on the flaring tool itself. And what I usually do at this stage is I also lubricate the tip of the uh, flaring tool itself. So I'm opening up the tool, open it up a little bit more so I can actually get it on here. Okay. Once it's on, you put the hole in the middle and then you screw it up. You want to make sure that this is nice and flat across here, that it's not going off at any angle like this or like that. You don't want it, you don't want it tilted forward or back. It has to be perpendicular in all directions. And once you have it set good, what I did that I found the best results is I would go a half a turn and slowly move into another half a turn and slowly move into another half a turn and so on and so forth all the way around until this nut bottoms out. But you want it to just bottom out. You don't want to clamp it all the way down and say okay it stopped it's good and then I would do something strange I would wait so if I think of metal as a liquid I have just shaped it into another shape so I like to give it a little time to set and then I slowly and gently unscrew it with a fluid motion and at this point I kind of picture what I'm doing is I'm burnishing a nice shine into the top as I unscrew it. I'm not just slamming it down and pulling it back up. I'm actually taking some care in the flare that I'm forming. So then you open up this outer side here, and the inner side too, and then you can pop your bubble flare out. Now this particular flare turned out, I would say, pretty good. I'll show you. So here's the bubble flare. As you rotate it, you can see if there are any uneven surfaces. Now I don't worry a whole ton about anything being too uneven on the bottom because this is pretty thin, it's folded over and it will actually clamp down really nice. What you wanna be cautious of is that these two slopes match as you rotate the bubble flare. And this one is pretty good. I would I would go with this one. Okay, and if I take a flare fitting and I put it on the tube. And rotate it. That has a really nice seat. So that is how I make my ISO bubble flares. Incidentally, I made, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five bubble flares and with this exact method using these exact materials and uh, ordered these on auto Recambi. These are the um, flare nut ends specific to the vehicle. Um, not one leak, so it works. I also found that when I was um, 
tightening the brake line onto the calipers that you did not have to apply very much pressure at all. So there you have it.